Hi guys, today I'm going to do another video with the G15 DK from uh, Asus, uh, a pre-build. I'm going to show you guys and talk to you guys about what you should look out for when you're buying a pre-build. Of course, that's if you have the chance to see it before you buy it. If you don't buy it online or if you buy it online and you, you have some pictures to help yourself out, make your choice. Uh, first off, I would suggest checking out the graphics card if it looks like a, a legit one with dual fans sorry for my big fingers yeah this one has double fan dual fans no like like legit plugs eight pin or six pins but well, that's a good clue uh, as to um, if the power supply can handle it sometimes uh, really cheap rebuilds might put some adapters for this you never want to have some adapters if it has a proper CPU cooler which I changed so it doesn't really matter for this one but have you seen in the previous videos I had like a it looked like a cooler master 212 EVO but uh, smaller uh, that was decent for the for, for the pre-build actually um, it's just that AMD with their PBO boost setup uh, makes it run odd for no reason. Uh, you also want to look for also there right here. You see the RG logo on this. It just shows that there's something to cool off the VRMs. Uh, that's something you want to look out for. Because you want your VRMs to be cool in order to make the board last and not shut down on yourself. And uh, if you want to overclock it, maybe that's a good option. You want to also look for a power cable for the motherboard. There's no like, again, like I said, no uh, adapters or anything, it's just straight up. From the power supply so that's something good you also want to look for um, the RAM situation which is under here uh, you can you cannot really see it but you want to look for uh, four slots of RAMs so you have like a legit motherboard and not some motherboard with two two uh, two dim slots available and uh, that's something that could limit you in the future and also indicates that it's a motherboard that's cheaper um, you want to look for airflow so we have at least a, a fan in the back uh, for this case it was pretty bad uh, airflow wise there was no uh, fans here or no fans there I just added those sorry for the cable management it's pretty shit but uh, yeah, you want to see and look for uh, fans in the front in a push-pull co configuration or whatever just to make sense and have something like I've come here um, have hair come in the case and thrown out um, which was an issue with this case at first uh, that's something to look out for that's pretty much why I bought this case and I, I knew there was issues with it and that I could make content with it, basically. You also want to look for mounting on top for a radiator or some kind of... If you just want to put fans, this case had issues with, with that also. Uh, there's no actual mounting for, for uh, fans. You can see there, I used long screws for that. Those screws are really long, they're for radiators. And also this case had a, like a separator across the board over here to, I don't know, separate it from the top and the bottom, which is another thing that's kind of bad. It just shows that the airflow is not good in the case since they need this. Another thing you want to look for, for is uh, uh, storage. I'm gonna show you right, right now. 
That's a pretty big issue with this case. As you can see right here, there's no real spot to put it. any drives, maybe like stick one here, but the case is not like, it's pretty, uh, it's not thick and deep enough. So that's another issue. Uh, you also want to look for if there's uh, cables to plug your drives like this a SATA power and a SATA, a SATA data you need some spares like the case needs to come with the power supply equipped already with additional power uh, SATA cables over there it's all covered up which I think is fine there's just no mounting for the actual drives which is kind of a pain in the ass, as you saw in a previous clip. I just put all the drives in there. <laughs> this ghetto was fuck, but yeah. I just want the I, I just don't want the drives to be hanging out there. So that's why I did that. You also want to uh, look out for expansions for for uh, SATA cables. It's not really showing up right now. I'm gonna show you an image. I'm gonna show you an image on uh, on Google, showing you guys uh, what you should look out for. But basically, you want to look for additional SATA plugs on the motherboard to put additional additional drives in the future. It's always a good idea and a good thing to have. You know, it can also be NVMe like this. There's an NVMe drive down below there. Ooh, if I can focus. Yeah. yeah. A little drive with two screws. You wanna see and look for uh, that those expansions on the motherboard. Uh, I'm gonna show you an image again for that. You also wanna look for the AIO, the IO, I mean, not the AIO, uh, for plugs, for all kinds of stuff. This is not a, a motherboard that you can basically buy anywhere. So that means there's less, less plugs available. That's one thing you want to look for if the motherboard actually has a number as to uh, as to what brand it is and also what model it is if you can buy it separately that means there's a good chance it's, it's a better board and uh, uh, not cut down like this one is because as you can see right there that's another indication it's a, a cheaper ish board there's no like some others got removed They just remove it to um, cut cost, I guess, and make it cheaper for uh, pre-builds, so they make a bit a bit more profit on it, which is fine. Uh, personally, the board has been running really fine. It's overclockable. Uh, uh, it's not by any means like a top tier motherboard, but it does a job. You also have to look for uh, bloatware uh, when you start off the computer. If there's any like uh, um, annoying softwares and programs that are put in uh, that may uh, make run the PC a bit less optimal, I would say. So all of this you need to like basically delete or check for that if possible if not then it's just a guess to take that's why you're looking at reviews like this but for this case specifically i didn't have any issues with that uh, bloatware situation besides a an antivirus software and besides that there was no 
nothing else really that was uh, uh, prone to make the PC uh, run a bit less optimal. There's also the the power supply situation. That's always something you want to look out for. Um, power supply should be um, 80 plus bronze or gold or whatever, at least 80 plus. Uh, that's like a good a good base, I would say. This is a great wall. It has the number C700, just like the Corsair ones. The great wall makes uh, makes power supply for Corsair, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. So it's not a bad power supply. But if you if you are willing or looking to buy a a pre-build, if you want to buy a pre-build, check what the power supply is. I think it's really important. A lot of people uh, overlook that, and it also like dictates if your if your uh, CPU or motherboard will last through the days. Another random cat. If it will last through uh, the days and hold on, because this the power supply is going to be able to handle like big big loads at some moments or power peaks, uh, so that's a good thing to look out for. And it's also going to tell you if uh, you can overclock safely without those peaks uh, making the the PC crash and not recover because the power supply wasn't able to. So that's a really big thing to look out for. If you are willing or looking for, I mean, a pre-built to buy, and you can check what the power supply brand and model is, look it up online, see if there's any reviews of it, or uh, if people have uh, had bad experiences with it. That's a thing to look out for. and. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the power supply situation. I think it's the most important thing for a case or I mean a pre-build or any custom PCs you're trying to build. Another thing to look out for is if you can uh, upgrade parts and change parts on the on your PC. If there's any, I've seen pre-builds where they just put like a ton of brackets and stuff. Uh, that are just the right size for every component. So if you're trying to upgrade or anything, you, you just cannot. So that's a big warning, a red flag for you not to buy the, these uh, these computers. Uh, they're known for, if you're looking out on Google and just on, on the internet, a lot of people are gonna flag those because they're really bad for uh, people who wanna be a bit more of a enthusiast about PC gaming or just computers in general. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video, feel free to comment, like, subscribe, and also look for description where I put a ton of videos about this case. Uh, and uh, uh, this case, I mean, it's pretty old. <laughs> and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for watching, and see you next time. Peace.